Hello and welcome to this presentation, Futures Prices and Basis. In previous presentations, we saw how it's possible if you are a natural long or a natural short, you can enter into a futures contract where you can lock in the forward buying price or selling price on the assumption that you hold the hedge until futures delivery day. In that simple scenario, it's possible then today when you take out the hedge to know in advance what your forward buying price or selling price will be with respect to the hedge. However, in many cases when people take out futures hedges they only hold the hedge for a number of days and not take the hedge through to futures delivery day in which case they are subject to basis risk. That is to say they're not quite sure exactly what forward buying price or selling price they will get. They can only estimate what the future buying price or selling price will be. If they hedge for a period which is shorter than the futures delivery day. So just to understand this relationship then we need to remind ourselves of what the idea of basis is and basis can be described simply as the difference between the price of the underlying asset today, in other words the spot price, otherwise known as the cash price, minus the futures price in question. So in this example, let's suppose that the spot price is $100 and the futures price is $120. This will give us a basis, in this case, of negative $20. Now let's not forget that sometimes you can have the spot price which is trading higher than the futures price, in which case you will have a positive basis relationship. It's common to represent the basis always as the spot price minus the futures price. And as we can see here, we'll end up with a negative basis. So how might basis look or behave over time? Well, what we can see here on the horizontal axis represents the passage of time. And at this point in time is the futures delivery day. The vertical axis shows us the, the basis. And as we can see today, the basis in this example is negative 20. Now what we can assume is that basis on the last day in the life of the futures contract will equal zero. And we know this because of in previous presentations we looked at the cost of carry relationship and said that the futures price is essentially the difference between the spot price plus carry costs and in some cases there is also the carry return consideration. But we make the simplifying assumption here that on futures delivery day, basis will, of course, be zero because there are no carry costs or carry returns associated. Now, the other simplifying assumption that we could make here is that over time, basis declines in a linear manner, as we can see here. So as time goes by, we're assuming that basis decreases to zero or goes from negative, I should say, 20 to zero. But of course, in reality, what happens is that basis tends to sort of meander around, and sometimes it can sort of be quite high or quite low, and then eventually what happens is that usually because of the forces of arbitrage, the basis will eventually go to zero. But what we can do, if we make this simplifying assumption that basis declines in a linear manner, then it's an easy calculation then to estimate or predict on a certain point in time, on a certain point in time, when the, uh, or what the basis will be. So in this example, using simple linear interpretation, we could estimate that on a particular day, the basis is going to be 10 at this point in time. So let's suppose that we're hedging to that particular point in time. then we can work out what the predicted hedge price is going to be by taking the original futures price which we trade at the beginning of time and adding that to, or adding, sorry, basis to the futures price. That is the expected basis, in this case, negative $10. So that would give us then an expected price of $110 at this point in time if we were to lift the hedge on that day. So just to summarise then, if we take out the futures hedge originally 
at a price of 120 and we intend to hold the hedge non until futures maturity day, we can try to predict what the basis may be on the day we intend to lift our hedge. And if we predict that basis is going to be negative $10, then our expected hedge price will be $110 in this particular example. But I think we can appreciate that if basis on this day is not $10, but maybe negative $15 or $5, then we can see that that will clearly affect the outcome of the hedge price here. So we can appreciate then that if basis turns out to be a number other than we had expected, this can influence the hedge outcome either in a positive manner or in a detrimental manner. Now we can see in later presentations that this basis risk can sometimes play havoc with the expected hedge price. And if you wanted to hedge the basis risk, then it is possible to do that for a series of calendar spread trades, which we will talk about in a later presentation. So just to summarize then, finally, with futures, if you take out a futures hedge and you hold it to futures maturity day, the simplifying assumption is that you're able to lock in the effective buying price or selling price as indicated in the original futures contract price. But if you hold the hedge and do not take it through to futures delivery day, and of course there are many occasions in which genuine hedges may want to lift their hedge early because they want to do something else in the underlying spot market, then you have to appreciate that then that you're going to be subject to basis risk. This basis risk can sometimes help or hinder the hedge outcome. And if you wanted to hedge the basis risk, we'll see that that is possible to do so through calendar spreads. And as I mentioned, We'll look at this in later examples.